so I just copied copied and pasted some some of the the uh, nice code we had from our little dice game here uh, to get some some kind of uh, input into our little system, and I think we will do it like this. So if I don't press the Q key, you get a, another list of cards here, just printed uh, again. And Q quits. So, all right, we have actually added some, some kind of input to our little, uh, little game here. So let's uh, start by examining how a sequence diagram for this um, would, would work. We had done the sequence diagram for <coughs> for the creation of the deck and the adding of the cards and the shuffle, I think. Uh, so, maybe we sh uh, let's start there anyway. Let's start there anyway. So, I will add a new page here and hope this one plays with us good. So, a sequence diagram is a type of a diagram that displays objects. In this case, we have an anonymous object, no name for it, but it is of type deck. So we have this colon and you have this uh, type name. And in this case, <coughs> we start off by creating the deck, calling the constructor. And this is kind of a, a special message in, in, in uh, UML called create. I don't really have room to, to display it there, but uh, as we will see, I will. And then you get a, uh, a lifeline of the object, that is, time flows downwards, and as long as we have a lifeline, the object is alive. And we also have this focus rectangle that tells us, okay, the program is executing in inside here now. So we have the scope so to speak, of function <coughs> functions, function calls or operation calls. <coughs> and if we remember, what we did in the constructor of the deck was to create a new card. I think we named the card C great name, and it was of type card. So here we have another constructor call then. Create call val. Oh, that was really <laughs> color and value. If we take a look at the code, we can see, oh, let's put that one down. And we take a look at the code in the deck. So here we added the, the, the value and the color. So, no, it was color and value. So, and we called the object C. And then we called add operation. Something like that. <coughs> and to be really, really detailed, we should also note that we actually do some looping here. And this can also be displayed in a sequence diagram. 
by just uh, framing what is looped. like so. And there in the corner you can write what you're actually doing. So in this case I would probably write loop for every color and value. Because that is what we are doing. <coughs> but I won't do it on the smart board for now, at least. So, sequence diagrams can be, if you do them really detailed, uh, or if you reverse engineer them from existing source code, they can be quite messy. Uh, but they also are quite informative. And if you do reverse engineer, you, you often need to remove a lot of noise uh, that is not really adding a lot of value. So I think the next thing that happens is, I will do some elongation here, is that shuffle is called. So we call shuffle. And what happens inside shuffle is that we do another loop, we get a card, and we call add card once more. So let's add that then. <laughs> really beautiful. So something like this is uh, what the sequence diagram for the constructor of the deck would look like. And for the workshop you are to make sequence diagrams like this. It is maybe not really necessary to add all the loop stuff or if you use a tool that does not have support for frames really. Uh, but as you see, it's quite quite easy to do to do this. I should probably have this one here like that. So because you you can just follow your code. What is happening in the code? How are the objects communicating? What messages and operations are really called here? So you do some, a little bit of design using sequence and class diagrams. You do a little bit of implementation, and then you go back and update. So one of the points of the workshop is to have diagrams that actually match the code and code that matches the diagrams so that we have a design that is telling the truth because we cannot have blueprints that says one thing and implementation that says another because that will be really really confusing so um Uh, why not go back now to the question that Svante had uh, and, and talk a little bit about uh, low coupling, 
Hi. Hi, cohesion. And these are two uh, uh, evaluative uh, principles that you can use. So if you have, have two different design choices, you can use the principles of low coupling and high cohesion to judge which one is better. I, th I personally think that, that class diagrams are more usual. Um, to, to have, we have a question here in the, in the chat, what sort of diagrams is often used for documenting a software? I personally think that class diagrams are more, more used. Uh, maybe that is because, at least as I learned, we did a lot of class diagrams and we only used sequence diagrams and, and stuff like that, kind of like uh, just to test the drive our class diagrams. In the book, he, he thinks the other way around is better. I think he has some points regarding, regarding this. Um, and I, I don't really see, I, I personally don't see really a lot of difference between uh, these diagrams and implementation because they all, they all are kind of like views of the same thing. During the design phase, uh, I don't think that we should be talking about anything like uh, some. There does not exist a design phase. Um, so I think it's more of a level of abstraction. In the code, you see certain things. You can see qualities that you need to fix. Oh, we have duplicated code, we have this and that, that you want to fix using refactoring, and this influences the design. In the design, for example, in a class diagram, you can see more, okay, we have all these uh, dependencies, and that could be fixed in this way. So, so bo both, all, all these views are, are good and important for us to, to get a high quality software. Anyway, low coupling is about uh, having as few dependencies as possible. So when you have two design, design alternatives, take a look at all the dependencies that you get from one and compare with all the dependencies that you get from another. And the one with the lower, lowest amount of dependencies has lower coupling and should be the candidate for uh, implementation. So it's a simple matter of counting, but you also need to understand what dependencies you actually have because it is easy to forget or hide the dependencies, dependency in some way. And high cohesion is about one class should do one thing and do it really well. So we should not mix responsibilities in the same type. We had an example here in, in our dice game before we did any type of architecture. It had kind of like a lot of responsibility. It had responsibilities for starting the application, it had responsibilities for some user interface stuff, it had responsibilities for uh, creating these various objects. And using our architecture we could remove at least one of those responsibilities from that class and, ma and make it more cohesive. I also think, uh, and these two kind of like play together, I think he mentioned the yin and yang of high, co high cohesion and low coupling. If you can achieve one, you probably achieve the other two. Because if you have a class with a lot of responsibility, chances are that it, it is coupled to a lot of things also. I think we had this uh, when we talked about uh, 
the long view separation principle. We used the circle class that we had. And at first it was really cohesive and had no, 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 no couplings at all. It was this pure concept of a circle and you could had, it had an, an, uh, a radius and you could, could get the circumferences and area and stuff like that. So it was really cohesive. It had no uh, real couplings. Maybe to uh, some kind of a pi constant or something like that, I could imagine. But then we added the responsibility of user interface to this type. And we had to add a lot of attributes. We had to add a lot of functionality. And we had to add a lot of dependencies to this user interface API that we uh, show, choose to, to use. For example, put pixel or, or whatnot. So evaluating those two design decisions, having one monolithic circle class with all the responsibility and all the couplings versus having two different uh, versions of the circle. One, this pure concept with, with low coupling and high cohesion and this uh, graphical user interface uh, circle that had one responsibility also because it's about printing circles on the screen. So it, it was quite uh, cohesive. And of course, the couplings kind of like followed with that class. So uh, you get some and you lose some in, in some cases. So this is about high, low coupling and high cohesion. And those are principles that you can think about when, OK, how should we solve this? And the other patterns kind of like point to two different or more uh, alternatives. So think about OK, which one is the most cohesive and presents the lowest amount of coupling for the types that I don't want coupling in? Uh, and make your choice based on those two patterns. And in the case of the circle, we had the architecture too, to help guide us actually, to not put user interface stuff into our model classes uh, and not put business rules in our user interface classes. Questions? All right. Uh, we will then continue with our uh, Blackjack game. And we can't really play it yet. So the first thing we, we probably need to do is uh, start a new round. And this is done in the way that the dealer takes a card from the deck and gives it to the player. Shows the card and gives it to the player. And then he takes a card from the deck, shows it, and gives it to himself. And he takes a card and shows it and gives it to the player. And then he takes a card and still has it hidden and gives it to himself. I think these are American blackjack rules. In Sweden, uh, I think the dealer shows the card to himself also. But we will add this feature of having the cards hidden. So. Player, uh, then dealer, then player again. Dealer, and 
this should be a hidden card. So, what should we do now? We have the requirement. Oh, maybe we should add also here. Present the hands and the score so that we can see the hand of the dealer and the, the score of uh, both the dealer and the player. So, how should we do this? What is the next step? Ask the player, hit stand split. Yeah, that is the next requirement maybe, but in our design process, what should we do next? Yeah, probably, but I think we're getting away ahead of time and thinking about more about implementation. We should probably do a sequence diagram. Do some design first. But as you say, we have this, uh, I think I will switch to the web sequence diagram application actually because I don't think the smart board is nice enough to play with. Oh, it actually remembered what we had here. Cool. So, we have a little bit of other stuff here. So, so maybe we could just... Um, start by... by uh, we, let's start in... We, we, we will start in the controller. Play a game. Because this is kind of like the system event stuff that will have happen first. The user will tell, will tell the game, I want to start a new round. So in play game, we have this. Maybe we should even do it like this. Uh, run black yak. Let's do it from, from really the beginning here. So. And this method was called play, I think. And that. So, something like that, play. And what... Uh, this will ask the view. Uh, start new round ah, uh, console start new round flip so in the play operation in the controller we will ask the view does the user want to start a new round and in this case we as we are doing the design for this we can say yes he wants to do that, so uh, the question is what should happen now? We are in the controller, the controller knows that okay the player wants to start a new round. And we should start this sequence of the dealer taking a card from the from the deck and giving it to the player, uh, and so on and so forth. And I think, as was mentioned here, we need some kind of concept to 
to uh, handle this responsibility for dealing the cards. And who should have that? The dealer. Yeah, I think that is a good, good uh, assignment because we need something that has access to the deck and we don't really have anything that has access to the deck yet so we have just deck and card so we should add the dealer. So the dealer gets a message to start a new round. Uh, it should ask the deck probably to get the card because the deck has the cards. So it is the information expert. Get first card. Yeah, yeah. That ha that happened when we started the the application. So, and this, uh, then we should, the dealer should show the card. And then the dealer should add the card to the player, give the card to the player. just add card to hand so something like that it to myself and we have kind of like the same the same thing all over again but show is not called really here yeah deal is probably better deal card Deal card, deal card, deal card. So, something like that. Good name. And I think also actually what happens up here is... We need to present these hands that we have or don't have uh, and the console will ask the dealer uh, get hand something like that and it will do the same for the player so okay we have some, some kind of printout over the state of the game. Um, we present the hands that the, the, the dealer and the player has. Uh, 
and, and probably could go, go one step uh, further here. Console. So, card. Get color. Console. Card. Get value. And this will also be. So, and there is apparently some way of adding these uh, these frames and stuff, but I don't know if I dare click it right now because maybe it just overwrites everything we have. But maybe I should could get a something like that, so it is copied at least. Yeah. Oh, this was an if. You can do ifs also in in in, in this. So we will do here. We have the loop. Okay, you just kind of like loop and say a text and then an end. So we could loop for every card in hand. End. Ah, that's kind of nice. Loop for every card in hand and ah cool so this this seems to be be uh, quite uh, quite all right i think um i think you can probably use these uh, plus signs here also to get the the focus yeah you could that could probably be a good thing to do to get a little bit better notation, I think. So here we have it. Maybe that didn't add that much, but maybe a little bit. Anyway, what has happened here is, okay, we need a new concept, we need a new class, we need a dealer, we need a player, uh, we need to store the, the hands in the dealer and the player, and we need a lot of functionality in the view. So we have like 12 minutes. So let's uh, dive into the implementation now that we actually have some, some kind of design here. And we can take a look at the, the sequence, uh, the class diagram. For the model, so we have dealer and and player, and the dealer will need to use the player in some way. It will also need to use the deck in some way. I actually think that the dealer will need to use the deck throughout the game, so I will opt for going for a an association there so we will store this as an attribute with the creative name deck and we have the cards and the player will need to store cards in his hand And the dealer will also need to store cards in his hand to be used later. Are we missing something? I don't really think so. So, okay, let's start with the dealer then. And we are 
are of course in the model. these two new classes we have here uh, dealer and player This was the first message that we got, and maybe we should just add some thing like that. So that is the first thing that we got. So we could get this up and running uh, really, really quickly now, and uh, just to get things compiling and knowing. because he sends the message to the dealer actually. So this is obsolete. Comment that out and we will have this did we call it? We called it present hands. And we probably need to send in the dealer and the deck really there right now, but uh, let's just not do that for now. hard code that for now and I think this is uh, good to go. Actually, nothing will happen, so we can just quit. So then, uh, in our dealer, we need to get uh, a hold of the deck, and we said that it, we will add it as a, a um, attribute here. Uh, deck and deck. 
Um, and let's just create the deck here for now. So let me know we have a fresh deck when we start a new round. The kind of kind, possibly also a little bit natural. So, um, so we have a deck, we will get the card. Uh, card C and deck get first card. And we will need to add this to our deck. There are probably a better way to do this in uh, in this, but right now I'm a little bit in a hurry, so... Uh, let's just do it like this and then we will change it later on. So we get the card and we get the, the dealer. And let's skip the show part for now or we can add the code for it possibly uh, show like that and do nothing here back to the dealer Deal card. That was it. C. So we have this. So where should the hand be stored and how should this be stored? Let's take the same idea we had in the the deck class, I think, just having a list of, of the cards and call it hand. Uh, we need to create that list also. Add the card to the hand. So, and just to make an example here, I think we should do this once more. As time is running out, and we will do in the console dealer a dealer, and it will be in this package. And we will do the Same thing as we did in, in the deck here. Call it get hand. Instead. So in the view we can uh, for take this. controller we should get the dealer and we should send the deal something like that yeah we have something at least here so will that compile everything possibly deal card invalid method declaration or return type required
list is not available because we need these. Start new round, start new round. C is already defined, yep. So, we got some cards at least. The dealer has two cards uh, right now. So, uh, we need to continue to add the player. And the, uh, we will probably send the player object into the dealer. So the dealer can, can use it and deal cards to it. And we need probably to send the player also to the controller to play then and create the player on top. So I will add this uh, implementation to uh, to uh, to the to the game right now and do some refinements uh, outside of this lecture. But uh, since the code will kind of like look the same, it will be kind of like the same stuff going on. Questions. So this is kind of like the process that you will need to use. You will need to do some design, do some implementation, update, go for the next requirement, do some design, do some implementation, update, go for the next requirement during the workshop. And the goal is to produce code, a working software, and the updated design that corresponds to the implementation. All right, I'm done. Great.